Recently, a good friend of mine, John Kelly, who's the pastor of Chicago West Bible Church, came and was a guest preacher in our church in our series, And Justice for All. It's a powerful message from Matthew 25 on Jesus and justice. I encourage you to go and listen in case you missed that. But after he preached, we sat down as two pastors and just had a conversation. Our topics ranged all over the place, from the political climate to racial tensions to how to move people closer to Christ in this current cultural moment. And we recorded that conversation. Rather than make you listen to an hour and a half of two pastors talking, we've broken that conversation up into five parts. So what you're about to see is part one of a conversation between two pastors. Well, hey, friends, welcome to, uh, what are we calling this, Pastor John? We're calling this... uh, I should have had a title, A Conversation Between Two Pastors. Yeah. So some of you will know me. I'm Pastor Jeff Frazier, and I serve as lead pastor here at Chapel Street Church in the far west suburbs. And this is a dear brother in Christ and friend, Pastor John Kelly. Tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Yeah, my name is John Kelly. I serve as the uh, lead pastor at Chicago West Bible Church on the west side of Chicago in the Austin neighborhood. Um, have a big heart for um, prison ministry. I serve with an organization called Prison Fellowship out in D.C., do a lot of advocacy work there, and um, have, I've been, tomorrow will be my 10-year anniversary. 10 years? Oh, right, yeah. You made it. By God's decade. grace, yeah. Uh, which is so huge for my wife and I, because, you know, that's not a big uh, category in our family's mm-hmm. history, so glad to break the cycle. I got uh, two boys, uh, Ben and Judah. Ben is seven, and Judah is, will be five in April, and I have two kids in heaven, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, glad you're here as well. I feel like I have to introduce my family now. I, oh, sorry. I, I have three children. I also have a Ben, but he's 21, and I have a 25, and a, and a 23-year-old. And so, uh, anyway, we, John, we got to know each other. Let's see. Uh, I, I think we knew about each other before this, but I think when we began, it was this summer, in the wake of uh, uh, George Floyd's death, yeah. we, had, we were on a panel together at High Point Church. And I think after that, we st- struck up a friendship, I guess I'd say it was... I would call it providential, but yeah, by God's grace, it yeah. was great. And it's been you've been a huge encouragement and challenge to me uh, as, a, as a pastor and a brother, learning from you. And so I, we, as we were talking, um, and John's been at our church to preach uh, that we would just have a conversation about some of the issues. We love the same God. We read the same Bible. We are, we have the same call. We come from different backgrounds, and we're serving in different contexts. Hmm. And so just thinking about. Um, what that looks like. And one of the things you said when you were here preaching um, was that justice shouldn't divide us, but it does. So maybe I'll start with the easy question. That's Why? crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why does justice divide us in the church today? The issue of justice. Yeah, I would say, I would say um, two reasons. I'm, and I'm just speaking from my own heart that has been sinful at times is, um, is we often put ourselves in the position of judge. Mm. And we're never called to, to judge. We're called to speak truth. God is the judge. Um, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. No Christian can condemn anyone. But we can speak truth. Yeah. We're called to speak truth in love. Mm-hmm. And right? So it's, I'm, I'm telling you this out of love for you and care and concern for your soul. Mm. Um, I'm not here to win an argument. Right? I'm here in love. So I think one of the reasons why justice can be a certain way is um, we, we, we want vengeance. And when you want vengeance, vengeance is void of mercy, void of forgiveness. Mm. It's just pay me what you owe me. Pay me what you owe me. And right. The Lord says vengeance is mine. And so um, one, I, w- I would say, is we put ourselves in the in the category of judge. And some of it might be um, understandable. Like we might have been deeply wounded. Someone might have hurt us and taken something from us or something might have happened in our childhood that we're more sensitive to the issue, this issue about or there was a death in our family. So this mm. is a little bit more raw. So there's, there's some nuance and different things, but that would be the first. And then the second, I would say, is um, it's easy to be aggressive about things that you, aren't, that, that you don't contribute to or that isn't a weak spot for you. Hmm. And so we, we can cherry pick. So we, we, we're, we're, we're not truly, you know, we're not truly for justice for all. It's sometimes justice for things that are important to me. Um, but and, and the, the body of Christ is so diverse that um, issue that might be serious over here, that's a nine or ten over here, might be like a three over here. But an issue that's like a three over here might, you know, a ten over here might be, we all have different environments, different yeah. things we live in, different yeah. contexts, different scenarios all across the world. And so I just think that it's easier to just gravitate towards something that you feel that you have right standing with. 
That you're on the right side. Yeah, of yeah I'm on the right yeah, side yeah, of this. So it's just yeah. easy for me to be like, well, you need to do. And then the, the stuff that's convicting to me, it's like, you know, I don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's 10. That, and, and what's hard is that's the way the world thinks. Mm -hmm. The world has a yeah. category for everything. Like they put you into a box. Jesus didn't fit into any category. Nobody right. knew what to do with yeah. him. Right. Like they didn't know to call him teacher, rabbi. They didn't know. They didn't really know. Even like the disciples didn't really know what to do with Jesus. Yeah. He, he just he, he was an equal opportunity offender. Yeah, because because when you're when you're a kingdom citizen, you transcend everything here. Mm. You don't fit any category nice and neatly, and so you end up seeing things that's like yeah, there's things over here that's healthy and good and and should be celebrated. And there's some yeah. things over here that's very questionable. Right. Things over here that's healthy, good, should be celebrated. Some things that's very questionable. Yeah. And so we're called to speak into different things. My sense is one of the reasons justice divides people, the, the concept of justice, is we don't have a shared definition for what that is. We don't have a, a hmm. in the church, we don't have a starting point for what, what's, what does that mean? Yeah, I agree. How do you define justice? Justice, truly, when you boil it down to what justice is, it's a demand for righteousness. Hmm. That's essentially biblically what justice is. It's it's when you when 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 um, you order something on Amazon <laughs> and they charge you twice. Yes. You start demanding justice. We naturally do this all Everybody the time. It doesn't show up Amazon. Amazon or your package didn't show up, yes, right? You you immediately start pursuing justice. Yeah. Right. You yeah. I forgive you. But I want my package, <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I forgive you for hitting me in the back. It's a fender bender, but I need my car fixed, right? right? And so, so we naturally don't have a problem with pursuing justice. To pursue justice is to say, this is not right, and and to demand something wrong being made right. Yeah. And that's why when you read in the Old Testament, the prophets of old, when they would call out injustice, they would also follow up with repent. Repent. That's what that's what Christians use. We tell people, hey, turn away from the wrong way and turn back to the right yeah. path. Yeah. The, the world's view of justice is not a turning back to anything. It's really a vengeance thing. Mm. It's pay me what you owe me. I don't really care if what happens to you on the other side. Just pay me what you owe me. Christians yeah. don't have that perspective. That's right. And yeah. so I think we talk about justice to, to bring it down in the most simplest terms is it's it's calling for whatever was wrong, being right. You're yeah. calling for righteous. You're saying this is not right. Yeah. So that's how I would define it. How would you define it? Or when you think of justice, like what comes to mind? Yeah, we, we use the same definition in the series that it's, it's, it's a desire to make things right. But even that begs the question, well, who decides what's right? How mm -hmm. do we, what do you do when you disagree on what the right thing is? And so for, I think for, for me, and I know you agree that what's right and just flows in the character and nature of God. Yep. And we know that from his word. That's, we start there. Correct. I would agree with you. I think it gets tricky, um, or nuanced, I should say, when, when you get to, into the weeds of like, okay, this is, this, this is wrong, whatever this is. How do we make it right? In a mm. complicated, broken world full of sin with lots of water under the bridge of history, how do, how do we make certain things right that we see are wrong in the world today? Econo economic disparity. It isn't right that people have, that grow up in poverty, stay in poverty. It's generational, white or black. Right. That isn't right. Well, how does that get, that is not right. That's unjust. But how do we make that right? And th that's where I think there's room in, in the body of Christ for debate, discussion, uh, listening to each other and challenging each other on what the best policy, the best practice is. That's where I don't think the, like the agreement as believers should be, this is wrong and unjust and we should care about it because God cares about it. How to go about on a, on a societal level, making that right is maybe not as clean you know, but, mm. but I, I would begin with what you said to us when you preached here, which is it, we don't get to cherry pick people or issues. It starts with my own personal heart, my own personal engagement. Mm. Um, I think some of these words are pretty broad, too, because, um, you know, a, a lot of times when you think of justice or injustice, you think of something that was wrong that was done, like something done wrong to someone. Yeah. Um, but then there are circumstances of life. Right. right. There's, you know, someone who um, gets hit by a car and is now disabled and caring for that person. And so just justice then shifts sometimes not from right or wrong in the in the what happened to the individual, but is my response to them right or wrong? Right. 
And so we got to be careful because sometimes there's just acts of compassion that's needed. And we say, well, that needs to be justice. And, and certain, and I want to be careful, but there's just certain right. things of like, um, uh, you know, someone gets COVID in this season. And we know they're struggling and the husband or the wife is home by themselves, the kids and lost their job and certain things. Right. right? And and that's that's challenges of life. Right. But then what becomes uh, not doing justice is seeing that and then closing our heart. That's to it. it. Yeah. And so there's a lot of nuance and moving around here when we think about justice. But at the end of it, it's you boil it down to in in whatever situation I'm in, what's the right thing to do?